now. Okay. All right, guys. I don't know why this cut off. It's not supposed to. Like I said, red Legos, yellow legs, red, yellow. Don't remember what I put, but we're going to go six. four to six dots. And all the rest of the Legos are still piled everywhere. But you're reaching down in the Legos and you're pulling out just these. And let's say another star in this guy, you've decided somebody else uses white and black. And they do one, two, five dots. Yeah, are you getting the picture? You've got all the Legos that you could ever possibly imagine. And then usually somebody will take part of these. And say, okay, I'm going to make a game and I'm just going to play with these Legos. All right. So, and these are all different. You can create anything you want. You're gods. That's that's the joy of this. And you can't ever, you can't ever run out of Legos or ideas. And then once you create a game, you can also, like, decide to take and play with somebody else's game. And you can interact. And you can do... I saw all of this. If you could just imagine, you don't understand how big this is. So much bigger than what people think. All right. So, we got this guy. We're going to call him the creator. This guy's the creator. Stephanie's dad, by the way, is very good friends of the dude that I'm calling the creator. And he is simply the creator of this particular game. He is no better, no worse, not good, not bad. He's just a creator playing with Legos. Just like you, okay? This creator came up with this completely different thought that nobody had ever thought of before. And basically, what... I'm going to use human words because that's all I've got to do to describe this. But keep in mind, there is really no such thing as time and or space. Anything that says light, dark, good, bad, up, down, anything that is used with mathematical... Um, verbiage or or uh, anything like that, that's just an illusion. That's a way of describing what Legos is using, okay? It's not really real. It's not really true. It's just an illusion. And I hate to say the word illusion because people say that like what? It just looks like you're inching forward. Oh, okay. People say that, like, I don't mean to, th to say that because it's an illusion, it's not real. It is very real. But before CGI, there were movies all day long where they blew up cars and uh, there were fires in buildings. And none of that was really a car in trouble or a building in trouble. It was very real. The fire existed, but it wasn't, it was just a story. Does that make sense? So it was very real fire, but it really was an illusion that the car was on fire in a dramatically horrible way and was hurting anybody, or that the house was going to burn down and there were people that were going to not have a home. It was all, uh, it was all make-believe. So this is all very real, is it physically real? It's just it's a made-up story so we can have fun. Okay, and this particular creator, and those that have played with this particular creator, these guys are what I call the extreme sports nuts of entities. They are the adrenaline junkies. Me, where I like to go play and what I like to create are very fun and happy and lighthearted and such and so forth. These guys enjoy intensity. They're the ones that are going to jump out of the helicopter with a snowboard at the top of a mountain that has never been skied before and ski down it. These are the people that are, are climbing to the top of Mount Everest with no help whatsoever, no ropes and no oxygen. Just to say that at the end of the day that they did it. These are these guys. And there's really, whenever you look at the big picture of how many of us there really are, this is really a handful of creators that come and and uh, and hang out in this whole game. The whole game. Because for the most part, most creators are not really into this kind of game. And certainly star seeds are not. We're very uncomfortable here. Okay, so you've got this creator. The creator had this idea. 
And this is actually in the Bible, and it's a good way of explaining it. And, the, and God said, let there be light. And he separated um, the light and the dark. So I want you to think all vibrations in the all that is. So he took a part of the all that is right here. Boom. And the creator went, hey, what would happen if I just arbitrarily divided these vibrations in half? And you cannot get to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say black here and white here. No, I don't like those words because black is really all color. White is no color. So uh, we're going to go good and bad, even though that's a dumb thing too. Good and bad. What about um, light and dark? Light and dark. We could do light and dark. So, essentially, what it is, is every vibration that's available in the, all that is, this creator said, um, I'm just going to divide them in half. And this, this division, even though you see it with your five human senses and your belief systems and your history as light and dark and good and bad, that is simply because those are the kind of goggles you've got on right now. You can take those goggles off and all you'd see is a whole bunch of vibrations. That's all you'd see. But, this is what the original move was. Let's divide every, let's have every vibration available. All the Legos available that you can have. All of them are going to be available in my game. Everything that you want, you can have in this game. However, this is going to be the trick. I want to divide these over here. And on this side, it's going to be blue and white and purple. And over here is going to be... Uh, black and and red and in other words you get my picture so on this side are certain colors this side are certain colors certain frequencies and if you are over here with this pile of Legos you cannot play with these Legos and vice versa cannot now you can leave this pile and you can jump over here and play with those pile and you can jump back and forth and back and forth all day long but you cannot play with all of them at once. And this was the beginning of what you know of as dualism. And a dualistic um, creation. Which had never been done before. Not like this. That was just the first move. <laughs> and everybody's going, you're doing what? Why would you want to just play with this kind of Legos? And the creator went, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. So we've got this move made. Now they're divided into two. And then the creator went, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do one like this. Fump, like this. And this is what you know of. You would identify as masculine energies and feminine energies. I do not mean male and female. I mean what you would know of classically. And if I could show them to you, these would be identifiable as masculine and feminine. So on one side, we've got light and dark. And then the second cut was masculine and feminine. Now, this is already what we call, what people call as fractally. A fraction is when you take something that's a whole piece of a pie and you divide it up into fractions of that pie. This is a fraction of the whole pie. This, therefore, is a fractal of the whole pie. So when you hear somebody say it's a fractal or fractaline, this is what we're talking about. It's simply taking all the vibrations that are available in the all that is, in, in source as you know it, and then there was started to be this breaking up of. And it started doing this, and then this, and then this, and this started moving very, very quickly. Now, this has been identified by people as different dimensions. Now, this is the original, the original, the original first two, first two fractals. Breaking up to then in the, all it is, okay? That was the very first two. That's what started this game. This is what makes this star an individual star via my analogy of the stars in the sky. Okay? Alright. 
Okay, now we're going to move forward by what, at this time, way, way up here, there's no linear time space at that point. There's just all of these fractals of energies that started breaking up into all these differences and all these differences. And what happens is, instead of looking at a human body, think of that that this creator was building bigger and better microscopes to look at parts of the human body. So this is the original human body in whole. Then it was broken down to look at, uh, let's say, the arm. And then we looked even closer and we went to skin. And then we went even closer and we saw blood vessels. And then we went even closer and we saw blood cells. And then within the blood cells, there was uh, uh, molecules. And then within the molecules, there are atoms. And if you had bigger and better uh, microscopes, you could keep doing that for endl endlessly. Okay, take this analogy, and this is what is going on within this game. You haven't gone anywhere, they haven't done anything, but what happened is the creator started all this, and then other, what happens is other gods are watching everybody else's games. Because on the other side, outside of this game, you know everything that's going on everywhere all the time. And that's no big deal. Uh, just like if you were to walk out your front uh, door and you look outside, you see all of the stuff that's going on right outside your door and you know it instantly what's going on in front of you. No big deal. Outside of this game, that is exactly what happens. So quickly, well not quickly, over a very, very long period of time, because you're dealing with gods, what became the cool thing was to see how big of a microscope you can use to see a smaller, more intricate, more deep part of the all that is. Because we as gods, we tend to deal with big things. I deal with big things, like my games would be uh, like, think the Milky Way. That would be my game. Whereas, this creator went the opposite. His game was to see how tiny we can make everything, every, how dense, how intense everything can be. So instead of being big and flowy and stuff, it was tiny and slow and dense. How dense can we do that? So in this process, somewhere along the way, which doesn't really matter when, but somewhere along the way, as this happens, other gods are jumping in. They all come jumping in. They all play. Everybody plays everybody else's game. If you're interested, you jump in. And a lot of times when a new god will come into the game, you always like to have respect for the originator of the game, but they may come in and go, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we try this? And a, the creator will either say, ah, no, nah, it's not the direction I want to take in this game. Or the creator may go, hey, cool idea. Let's give it a go. And they'll add and subtract. So even though this original thought was from this guy right here, by the time, very, very quickly, it's many, many gods at play. And this continued on and on and on and on and on. Down to the point where the game became, was incorporated into it, hey, what if we try to forget that we're gods? Again, never been done before. This dude right here, he really likes creating stuff that is very unique. So, other gods were like, what? And he was going, what, what if we create this place and we completely forget that we're gods? What, what do you think? And they were all in, of course, going, yeah, you betcha. Now, then they started the process of trying to forget that they are gods. It is very, very, very difficult to get a god to forget that they're gods. Very difficult. Very tricky. Uh, very, very tricky. You can go back on other videos to kind of go into this further, but eventually down the line, that is what got us to planet Earth, also known as Gaia, who volunteered to play the role of the playing field as humanoid beings got on this planet to have all vibrations available and by this I mean, think of uh, Star Trek and Vulcan. A lot of the fourth dimension, there's a lot of other planets, but they have limited vibrations available. 
uh, so they have limited emotional range. Whereas by the time they got to Earth, this was the last one. They were going, okay, we're going to make everything available, but at the same time, we also are going to go into full amnesia. So even though you get all these people who are saying, oh, the point is to remember that we're gods. No, it's not. The whole point of this was to forget that you're a god so that you could play, have this experience, this whole different perspective, not as a god, to forget that you were a god altogether. So all of these things that have been put, to place, put in place that people hate, uh, pain, fear, education system, political system, uh, religions, uh, all of it, have all been used over millions and millions of years in order to lower the vibration, fractal it out on this planet, so that a god could be, come here in human, human form and forget they're a god. Totally, totally forget that you're a god. Going from a stage of being able to control everything and do anything you want, know everything at all times, to totally believing that you have absolutely no power and that you are next to nothing. That is the whole point of this. And the fact that it was done, nobody thought that this could happen. Nobody thought that the, the Gaia would get to the third dimension on those low vibes. Nobody believed it could be done. But it is, an, it is these entities that keep coming back and back millions of lifetimes in every way, shape, or form, from a beetle bug to a, uh, a reptilian form to a humanoid that have done it over and over and over again, tweaked and tweaked and tweaked, to get it to the point where people could come and get on this planet and forget that they were gods. Now, in the process of doing that, they had to incorporate linear time space. Otherwise, it didn't allow for the fractally to break down. So they, in, they figured out in this process that in order to get to those low vibrations and be in full, complete amnesia, they had to incorporate linear time space. And that became slower and slower and slower and slower. And in... You know, there was a lot of practicing. There was a lot of, well, um, maybe it needed a whole bunch of different alien DNA from all over the place. They tried that. Uh, there's been like, I think, seven or eight major tries at this. And I mean, humanity on the planet as a whole, and then pretty much taken out and started again. So they thought it would take more enlightenment. Uh, that ended up being wrong. So they tried... Um, that was like crystals in Atlantis, and that didn't work. And so then they kind of went to the other end of the spectrum where they went all cavemen, Middle Ages, where they had no enlightenment at all, and that didn't work. What ended up working and actually taking everyone to the third dimension was civilized mankind, as you know it. That is actually what drove us to the lowest vibrations of third dimension. That was success. That was where this creator, most recently, had been attempting to get to. Of all things, it was it was uh, civilized mankind, as you know it, is actually what worked. Okay? Does that make sense? Okie dokie. So now we know. Let's go back up. So when I say within this game, I mean this one star in the sky out of infinite other games that started from your perspective with duality. And up until now, right now, it has gone down to, at this present time, the, what you would call, one dimension. Okay. This includes, from here to here, includes everything that you know. Every universe, every galaxy, every waveform, every <laughs> um, 
angel, every god, every alien that you can think of, every everything that you can possibly imagine from your understanding, every book you've ever read, every single one of them are all inside this one game. One game. That's just one game, guys. Everything that you know of is all within one game. When I died, I went outside of this game and went running around and seeing the, you know, those infinite other stars that I told you about that are other games. I went into all of those too. And I didn't even come close to experiencing all that I that there were. There are many. It's, it's huge. Most of what people talk about on just about day to day from any period of time are all things that are within this game. On top of that, most things that you talk about and you know about are not only within this game, but they are simply in the third to fourth dimension only. And you don't even have a clue about the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is so much bigger than you know. There's the gods are all there. Jehovah's there. Satan's there. Angels there. Every alien, um, alien species that you know of that would be considered um, in any kind of way a dualistic of a dualistic nature. And in any kind of linear time space, whether they control it or not, because fourth dimension, the reason why it's called fourth dimension is this, this is where aliens or beings of any kind know how to control time. That's why it's called the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is time. So as Earth goes into the fourth dimension, people start to figure out how to control time. Speed it up, stop it. In, out in the fourth dimension, there are, of course, gods and goddesses that absolutely can control time completely. And then there are all kinds of aliens that can either control uh, time and space either with their mind or with um, mechanically, with machines. Okay. That's all just in the third and the fourth dimension within this game. Now, above the fourth dimension is where I talk about that Gaia is going almost completely is in about 98%, give or take, of Gaia is already dialed into the fifth dimension. Fifth dimension. Fifth dimension is what I tell people it is like for a human. It would be a magical place. Magic. That's what you want to add. Magic. Fifth dimension is magic. Third dimension is you know what third dimension is. Fourth dimension, you add time. And fifth dimension, fifth dimension is magic. Okay. Above the fifth dimension, between fifth dimension and out of the game, that fifth dimension, so, so we've got, from your perspective, 3D, 4D, you've already made that switch from 3D to 4D. You're going into 5D. A lot of you are trying for it anyway. After 5D, between 5D, we're going to say 6D and up to the edge of the game, where that border is, where that first dual, dualistic split was made. Okay. Hey. Can we pause? Uh, you can't stop it. Hey, stop it! Freya! Stop it! Um, from this dualistic first move to above fifth dimension, which is 60, this area in here is more of a creationary process of planets, solar systems, universes. This is really, by the time you get into the fifth dimension as a human, in a human body, uh, you can leave the game. If you're in the fifth dimension in a human body, you can leave the game 
anytime you want. You don't have to die. You don't have to transform. You can simply say in the fifth dimension, oh, okay, I'm done. I want to leave. And you just leave. You twinkle away and you leave the game. Okay? So anything that's uh, 5D from my perspective, this is how I identify these. I'm not going to argue with anybody else who talks about densities and other calls for uh, for uh, uh, dimensions. This is my definition of these, which is why I'm doing this vid these videos right here. From here up, it's really nothing that you would be concerned with. You just really wouldn't. If you're a part of the sixth dimension and above, you have been playing this since the get-go probably anyway, and none of this will matter. At this point, you will understand all of this part once you get here. The amnesia starts to really drop away in the fifth dimension. This, it's the fifth dimension in human form, is where you get most of your memory back very, very, very quickly. Once you get it all back, those that want to stay in play, then you can be born back into an uh, amnesia, into any of these kind of, any of these dimensions. And now 1D and 2D are available. And they keep going. They keep going. They'll be like, I guess, zero dimension and negative one and negative two. However you people want to say that they are. But this right here, this 60 and above, this is an area that you, it's more of a planetary. You wouldn't look at it from a humanoid standpoint or an individual uh, being uh, on a smaller that was on a planet rather than B 